Invigorating good um, budget and finance meeting. I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, and I wanted to, before we get into, uh, we have established a quorum, and, and the, in the back of the room and along the sides over here, there are some beautiful artwork from our precious little students over at Waverly Belmont. And so if you get an opportunity um, during the meeting, or I, I would say after the meeting maybe, take a gander at the artwork that um, these, these children did. And so earlier when we were doing our budget and finance meeting, I know I saw this person smile, especially at a couple items in the budget, so I'm gonna ask Beverly Flat to say that it lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in a salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> We're going to have a very quick um, a business meeting and then uh, adjourn and go into a work session tonight. All right. Uh, the consent agenda reads as follows 1A, approval of minutes, 124 17 and 2 14 17. B, recommended approval of supplement number one for professional services, facility conditions assessment, and master planning services, MGT Consulting of, uh, Consulting of America Incorporated. C, awarding of purchases and contracts, one, Catapult Learning LLC, two, library video company DBA Safari Montage, three, NCS Pearson Inc., four, S&H Computer Systems Inc., D, recommended approval of lease agreement with Nashville Tools for Schools for use of the print shop building at the TPS campus, and E, compulsory attendance waivers. Madam Chair, I move to approve the consent agenda as read. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Sure. Okay, this approved? No, okay, thank you. Um, moving on to item number two, the Magnet Schools Assistant Program Grant Resolution. Good evening. Uh, what I wanted to point out was, uh, given a, a variety of things that happened since we last met in governance, the text of this magnet school uh, resolution is exactly the same as we reviewed in governance. The only difference has to do with the, the names of the magnet schools, and, and that is so that they can differentiate themselves. I think you may recall that we had seen uh, Glencliff Steam Magnet and so on, and, and based on the, the school contributions and development of what their programs will be. There's uh, some slight name changes. Glencliff Entrepreneurship, STEAM Magnet Elementary School. They're all very, and the other point is they're, they're in similar part of the city and so we want them to be able to differentiate from um, themselves. Inglewood Environmental Sciences, STEAM Magnet Elementary School. Rosebank STEAM Magnet School, Integrated Technology and Biological Sciences. Warner Arts Magnet Elementary School. Witsit Environmental Engineering STEAM Magnet Elementary School. Mouthfuls, but it allows them from the branding perspective to, to have some differences and their programs will concentrate on those, those uh, subcategories that are indicated in their names. So, so okay, uh, thank you. Um, could I get a, a motion to approve the um, Magnet Schools Assistant Program Grant Resolution as presented to us? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Can I get a vote? All in favor? Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. I almost uh, so will this take care of the actual naming process rather than having a naming committee to come forward and do the same? I would okay. think so, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? So I think we need to yeah, just kind of be clear on that. In the, in, I'm sorry, we need to be clear on that because that's actually a good question. I didn't think about that. Does the proposal for the, I don't know if, if Grant, who's the guy that usually does this? He's not here. Is the, Joe Edgens, is the, I think we need to get that clear. Does a proposal for the grant allow us to change the names as well? 
So uh, I will the double check program. right now. Yes. This this is for the, the magnet process and for those names. We'll make sure with the state that if there are any other steps we need to go through uh, to formally change the names of the schools, uh, we'll, we'll follow through on that. I would say right now, this is the resolution for the school's areas of focus to be these. Sure. Agreed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So all in favor? Show of hands. Mm -hmm. Any others? Thank you. So the um, resolution passes as presented. Then we're moving on to number three, the 2017-18 district calendar revision. Dr. Joseph. I'll turn that over to Dr. Felder. So this edition of the um, district's calendar uh, represents uh, just one tweak, and um, and so recognizing that we really need to allow for transitioning of our youngest learners, our pre-K K students, uh, this calendar uh, reflects uh, that the, on the seventh and eighth, uh, those would be half days for pre-K and kindergarten students. So, other than that, um, the calendar is the same. They would be half days for. What students? Pre-kindergarten pre and kindergarten students on the 7th and 8th. The Colonel will be so glad that yes. we have a Veterans Day. Okay. And so this is something that we don't vote on. Because years ago we, we decided we did not want to vote on the school's calendar, so we won't. So um, we have some questions or comments? Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to ask, you know, for the, the future consideration, especially when we start school on a Monday, I'm just still hearing a lot from kindergarten teachers about um, jumping in this way without the weekend in between. Uh, I think they're just concerned about the, the kids' ability to kind of hold it together by Wednesday. Um, and also just knowing that they want to give uh, really good assessments of the children and, and can they better do that you know, if the, if the kids dismiss at half day and then they come in with their uh, as an appointment in the afternoon, just just ongoing. Um, not sure what our kindergarten teachers district wide think about that, but if that could be a factor in as we consider the calendar going forward. Any other questions around the calendar? We have added an item number four to our agenda, and that's an update um, on the Antioch High School um, situation, Dr. Joseph. Yes, Doctor. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hunter asked that we just give an update on where we are uh, with uh, Antioch High School because um, I had an opportunity to visit yesterday and there are amazing students there. I mean, I spent about three and a half hours talking with students and with uh, Dr. Wiley, uh, just talking about the issues that, that occurred uh, on Friday when the students walked out. And we have implemented a plan, or put a plan together, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Narcisse uh, to talk through what has been done and what the future plans are and, and timeline so people are aware of when we would anticipate following up on uh, the actions that we are proposing. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Narcisse. So um, as Dr. Joseph stated, we went yesterday, the actually a uh, team of us with Dr. Jovis to meet with the principal and some of the folks that were there and had an opportunity to talk to kids and those pieces. So we created an action plan. We actually been working on this um, over the weekend going into um, this week. So um, as there has been communication sent out already to um, out to schools, Dr. Joseph um, visited yesterday. We began to have conversations with focus groups. Um, Dr. Wiley today, they did what they call a restorative circle, which is a strategy on how you just let students kind of talk through um, their processes. And they did that with the students who actually were there protesting. Um, as you know, there's different group of kids to give them an opportunity to speak, and that was led with the assistance of the dean that's there and other members on the faculty. Um, we also did a communication protocol to use that we've used to help um, respond with faculty, to give faculty a voice today. Um, they met with the faculty as well. There was a faculty meeting that was there with Dr. Wiley and the ELPs as well as the other administrative team. Um, we also went, there was issues and concerns around facilities. So we've sent facilities personnel, we've deployed facility personnel to go check on some of the 
um, follow up that there was, you know, there was documents sent out around concerns. And so we wanted to verify those concerns. And if there were some needs to address, we sent that out today as well. Um, the other part we've done is also tomorrow, we've already begun to um, have family and um, the testing evaluation research and assessment will be doing focus groups with faculty and staff to give them an opportunity to to talk a little bit to see what their concerns are. Um, Dr. Wiley is also um, planning right now as we speak to hold a football meeting with the students and parents. She's already begun to engage some of the parents there, so they're working with them to have try to get a meeting set up by tomorrow. They wanted to meet before spring break to specifically to those football players and parents to tell them what the next steps are as they are moving forward. Um, Dr. Wally also is, um, is meeting with the student senior advisors um, and with other staff leaders that are part of that process to have conversations with seniors directly. There's been some miscommunication such as senior week um, and those pieces, so she's working with them to kind of inform them, here's what's going on. Um, as you can imagine, um, there's been some communication gaps and we're working around those pieces as well. Um, and then the other piece is to make sure that we're um, working constantly around communication. Some of the gaps have been just voices being heard at different levels in the communication. So there's been protocols that we're supporting with to get that work done. Um, during the week of break, we, um, as I stated to, to you before, Dr. Changas is, um, um, is going to be sharing information with staff and focus groups for more opportunities to engage. Um, Dr. Riley will then be convening a team to assess, prioritize a resolution of short-term goals and long-term goals as we're going into the year to finish up the year. Um, we're also going to address, there's been some confusion a little bit around things such as PSATs, um, and that's been a little bit of confusion uh, based on um, what the PSAT process has been, um, and that's dealt more with budget concerns before Dr. Wiley came, so we're working to address that with the audit team, and so there's been some misguidance around that component, so we're gonna work to iron that out. Um, and then, um, we're, um, Dr. Wiley's also gonna be holding um, parent meetings to give some drop-in coffee so parents can come by and engage and have some conversations around um, some of the concerns that are happening there. So that's what we have thus far. Yes, <clears throat> thank you guys for all of the work that you've done over the weekend and also yesterday. Um, I do have one question. How did you address the food? Um, how was that addressed? Yeah. So we are sending um, folks out, um, um, I forgot what that service is called, Chris, from the, <laughs> from the department. Yeah, there was an allegation of, uh, I think, mold, moldy food undercooked. Uh, we looked into that. Uh, when the allegation was made, we had the health department come out and do an inspection. Uh, they gave the school a 97 uh, score. Uh, what we think has happened, there was a picture of a breakfast sandwich, I believe, that had been reheated more than once. And as you know, sometimes uh, it's a it's pre-cooked sandwich, and so it's just being reheated. Sometimes the egg can have a green tinge to it after it's been reheated. We believe that's what the issue was, but we've not seen any indication of moldy food or, or raw food or anything like that. And in fact, the inspection score of 97 was very good. <clears throat> also, um, um, warm water, is there a plumbing concern in that building? There's an issue that Metro Water Services is working on. It's the water pressure coming into the school from outside. And uh, that's something that Metro Water and our MNPS plumbers have been trying to work to rectify over the last week or so, week or two. Uh, so we continue to do that. We, my understanding is today uh, the pressure was much better. Uh, usually it's an issue during peak times when students are on break or whatever, um, but uh, I think that's improved. And so that's something that we continue to work with Metro Water to resolve. So much. Does anybody have any questions, Ms. Pierce? Right. Um, I'm just curious about like, going forward as examples for other, other schools and students, because I, I do think they um, seem very articulate, um, but just wondering, have they voiced these grievances prior? Uh, to it resulting in a, in a walkout, um, or and just to, to even know for other school communities, 
making sure we're communicating our grievance process so it doesn't, we don't get to another point of a walkout somewhere. Yeah, so um, we, we, we work with the communication office and various groups to try to monitor what's going on at school. We did not, these complaints, some of the complaints that we've seen on there were not complaints that we were aware of. We've been in also constant communication with the principal. We, when the principal came and we know that there's, you know, when, especially when you have new leadership, People are adjusting to the new leader in those pieces, but these are not, the, some of the components that we saw in there were not things that we were aware of at all. Um, there were decisions, as I stated before, that were some previous decisions that we were working out, such as the PSAT component. Um, there's a much, much larger context to that because we had an audit team go out to do pieces in the district did provide um, some guidance around those components because students were paying for their own PSATs, but those were pieces that, um, Dr. Wiley walked into that was a part of the last budget cycle. So we're gonna be, we're now monitoring a little bit closely around that, but at least from those components, we did not see this coming in this space. Okay, anybody else? We're gonna make sure each one of the uh, issues that were identified once uh, Dr. Changus's team goes through complete speaking with staff and, and we meet with students, we'll make sure that there is a clear response to each one of the items that was uh, identified in a, in a resolution. Uh, so there's, there's clarity on these were the issues that were presented and here's how we have responded uh, to them uh, appropriately. I for one would just like to say thank you for your quick response. I mean, it happened just Friday and you indicated you were out there this weekend and um, and yesterday and so by Tuesday we have, you know, had a, have we had a response. Um, not everybody's gonna like everything and we know that, but just to be able to listen and address the needs that, and I thought the students did a phenomenal job of being very articulate. And so, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, we were listening to them because as we always should. Um, I know that you mentioned that the principal was gonna meet with the parents. Do you know if there is an actual community parent-teacher meeting planned at this point? No, our, our goal was to um, have a parent community meeting after spring break. Okay. I do know that Dr. Wally was adamant about making sure she gets to minimally talk with the football players and their parents right away to be able to have a discussion with them about the plan moving forward. So um, there's been also this notion of time with spring break around the corner too. So we, we, um, we talked about prioritizing who we need to talk to right away that's affected and then go from there. And also providing opportunities, Dr. Joe has said about talking with the kids who were protesting to see what their concerns are, so. One of the biggest issues we heard yesterday centered around this clarity around um, senior week. And I think there were, there were parents that were anxious about what are the actual facts for what is going to happen during senior week this week. So uh, we've made that a priority to make sure that there's clarity that there will be a senior week and there will be activities and so forth. And, and Dr. Wiley has been charged to work with parents and students to provide clarity on, on what's going to happen there. Dr. Bannon. So I'd just like to thank the administration for their very deliberate and thoughtful process and approach to solving the issues that, that were raised. Thank you. Very much. <clears throat> Ms. Bugs? I'll be, <clears throat> be there now for the business. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, okay. So now we'll go into our, um, our work session. Um, and our first item on the agenda is the strategic plan. Okay. First one. Okay. Good, good evening. So uh, 
Well, I'm gonna go through a PowerPoint, but I also have for you a document that lays out the structure of the strategic plan. Uh, I appreciate uh, many of you spent one-on-one -on -one time with me uh, and then also sent me emails about your feedback. Appreciate that, it's, it's invaluable. We may need to do that again over the next 10 days. Uh, but I wanna, this does uh, reflect reflect your feedback. But to, just to start off tonight, I wanna remind us where we are in, in our sequencing uh, in, in, and set the expectation or re-clarify the expectation of what phase one, which is the strategic planning process, will entail. Uh, phase one is really an establishment of mission, vision, and values. We, we, we know that, those are the foundational pieces. The other two foundational pieces that we've decided to include are the student and school characteristics, and I believe Cameo just handed out copies of those. You've seen those before, you've provided edits on those. Uh, the next, uh, then we have of what will be called our goals and our four big impact areas. We have strategies linked to each of those impact areas, and then we link to each of the strategies. We have specific or their high level action items as well as key performance indicators. And those represent the what, uh, not how we're going to measure them or to what level we're going to measure them, but at this point, what are we going to measure? As we get into phases two, uh, and three, we're really looking at implementation planning, we're identifying baseline measures, uh, we're establishing annual targets, and we're establishing what our reporting timeline will be. So I just wanna clarify that the high-level strategic plan is just that, it's a framework on which we will hinge the rest of the uh, work that we do and our performance reporting to you all, but first we have to create that structure that allows us to do that. And then as we go forward, looking at implementation plans, so even with the detail that you have in front of you and that, that you'll see in, in the PowerPoint, there's still a, okay, so how are you gonna do that? And when are you gonna do that? And uh, who's going to lead that effort? And how are we going to know that we're successful in that effort? Uh, so when you look at the high level actions column on the far right of what you have in front of you, those questions are likely to come up. That's what we clarify when it comes to not only with the key performance indicators, the middle column, we will then clarify what's the baseline, what are our annual targets, when will we report based on the measures that we're using. When you look at the high level actions, when we get, we go into implementation planning, that will be specifically this year, what are we going to do? How are we gonna accomplish it? Who's the lead? How regularly are we going to report back to you all on it? But I just wanna be clear of, because I know a lot of times when we see something like a strategic plan, it's like, okay, well, how are you gonna do that? Or where's the this, this next level? And it's very uh, sequential. So uh, I just urge you to think of the strategic plan as a major, as a clothesline and we're hanging everything else on the clothesline or as an umbrella. The uh, next piece is when we look at metric development. This is again, uh, this is on the, the screens. Uh, <coughs> the, if you see the, the, what's green and then what's gray, hopefully none of you are colorblind in those, those areas. Uh, we, we're looking at what will we measure and the how are the tools and methods we'll use to measure them. And then as we get to that schedule, those baseline and the targets, that happens in, uh, again, in phase two. Uh, so after we approve the strategic plan and we move forward, we're, we're continuing to do this work and to double down on the exact nature of uh, how we'll be reporting out and what the measures will be. Any questions on that before I move on? Can you put that back slot? Uh, yeah, that one, thank you. What we're doing is we're screaming towards March 28th with hair on fire, <laughs> uh, but it's been very methodical and I'm gonna go through a little bit of, about the, uh, the process some more, again, just to revisit and reiterate it. If you would like a copy of this, um, uh, Ms. Shepard, I can certainly provide it. Yeah, I got it, thank you. Okay. 
And uh, the other piece I neglected to mention is, okay, before we got into strategic planning or coinciding with the launch of our strategic plan development was the 100-day report. So there was a lot of documentation, a lot of information gathered, as you well know, that, that then um, allowed us to say, well, this is the direction I believe we're headed in. The transition team findings added further information, and then we've been feeding uh, our synopsis of, of that as well as what we all worked on or, or are working on back to the community, get feedback, and then we revise, we edit and revise and come, come back to you. So um, I'm just gonna run through the vision and mission. We've seen that, we're, we're, uh, the, you begin to see those in all of our schools. Uh, these are, again, the foundational documents. You'll see some of the values show up in the actions and in the strategies. We want you to make sure that they're aligned, that you believe that the, that the goals, strategies, and the key performance indicator areas represent and tie back to these values and the mission and vision. Uh, so just to reiterate, we've uh, had a lot of opportunity for you to provide feedback. I, I hope you believe it's sufficient. If not, I'm sure you'll let me know. Uh, and we really ha have valued that participation and that feedback. And, and then we've also, as I mentioned, had the community feedback surveys. Uh, we have one more that we're gonna be sending out this week. Uh, though it's been a busy week, we're probably a day or two off of our timeline. We had a pr principal focus group last week. Uh, 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 met with the Stratford cluster parents last week. Had an MNEA focus group last week. This week, meeting with the mayor's parent cabinet, the mayor's teachers cabinet, SEIU, and then we have a planning session with uh, central office direct reports. So that speaks to we're, we're we're looking at is this understandable? Does it reflect what we've discussed? Does it reflect what you think needs to be done. Uh, so to, to go back, as I've spoken to each of you over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've talked about these four areas of focus, our students, our people, our organization, and our community. The goal statements have evolved <coughs> a little bit, but the main focus of each of them, it stays the same. Uh, has stayed the same, but it, it also has to do with other people looking at it and saying, well, wait a minute, is that measurable? How are you gonna know that you've fostered a love for learning or, or something like that? So we've tightened up these statements based on your feedback and others. So create an environment that fosters active student engagement and consistent improvement in academic achievement. Uh, create a culture of collaboration and shared accountability where people are valued, supported, and personally invested in personal growth. Create organizational excellence across the district and schools. Create strong partnerships with our parents and the community to collectively improve student outcomes and the growth and viability of Greater Nashville. So right now, now granted, I have I think three more conversations <laughs> this week. There may be some slight tweaks, but those are the, the four areas of focus. Uh, and I'm, I'm running through these as an overview, and then there are gonna be some specific questions that I would like to get your feedback on tonight, and then a, a little bit of homework that I'll follow up on with you, and that involves the sheet in front of you. Uh, so goal one, again, we, we, we just heard what that is about, this one really has a focus on student achievement. There are three strategies, and if you are looking at the uh, legal size document uh, in front of you, we basically have, uh, uh, you have it on a couple of different pages. Unfortunately, it looks like the page break didn't work the way I would have preferred, but you, the first strategy is improve student academic outcomes by creating and delivering high quality instruction and increasing the relevance and rigor of the curriculum. So that has to do with the academic nature of our work. Uh, improve student academic outcomes by providing equitable access to high quality, well-rounded education. Strategy two has to do with access to, uh, an equitable access to program offerings across the district. Ms. Hunter asked a little bit ago about, do students have the ability to take this, uh, at least a minimum number of AP courses in every high school? That's an example of equitable access. Strategy three, improve student academic outcomes by addressing school climate and culture and the social and emotional needs of the whole learner. So 
what I'm gonna move on now to, we've talked quite a bit about the KPIs, uh, and a lot of you have weighed in, as have others, and I'm gonna ask you to look at, I'm, I, I have e each of the uh, KPI measures linked to a strategy, and you also have them in front of you, but I'd like you to take a minute, I know it's the, these work sessions, it feels very formal with me at the microphone, um, but w this is a work session, so to take time to look at, now these are the what, so what we've, what we've done over the last uh, week is we've t separated out the how. How do you plan to measure it? Are you gonna use NAEP? Are you gonna use MAP-R? Are you gonna use MAP-M? And separated those kinds of measures out because that's the how. So what these, the, this, this current middle column uh, focuses on is what we will measure. And it would be helpful if you looked at these and indicated which of these are the most essential to guide and monitor student achievement in the district? And there, there are actually the three sets. We can take them strategy by strategy. Um, and I think you guys can also, okay. So strategy one, again, focusing on uh, improving student academic outcomes uh, through the vehicle of high quality instruction and relevance and rigor. Now, you, you see, in, in, for those of you who have the legal size document, you can see that the high level actions begin to tell you how we plan to do that work. And some of you, when I've spoken with you over the um, last couple of months, uh, we start, we wanna get right into the how. We wanna start thinking about, well, what are we gonna do to make that happen? And I, I thought it would be helpful for you to know what's covered in that column or in that area right now as you look at the KPIs so that you they don't get mixed together. And, and that's, that's always a hard thing to do is to just focus on uh, the measures when you're thinking about, well, how am I gonna know uh, uh, how we're, we're accomplishing this? Okay, so I'm gonna ask you to take three minutes to look at strategy one and the, key, the KPIs. And, to th and you've all looked at these recently uh, to, to think about which of these are the most essential to forwarding student achievement? And so, for example, just so that you're aware, um, on the flip page, on page two of the legal document, you'll see there's some of the, the pieces that were in uh, the KPI versions that you all saw earlier that have been extracted kind of as a running sample of how might, how might we measure these. another minute? Amy's ready. Would you like to start? Sure. <clears throat> it may, you may say all of them and that's fine. I, well, I do. I think they're all important. If I had to pick my top three, I think um, that we should be focusing on growth, uh, that we should be focusing on um, reducing gaps, and that we should focus on meeting college and career readiness benchmarks. Um, we off, you know, we, achievement scores are important, but we know that they are highly correlated with socioeconomics, so I think it's more important that we're seeing growth for everyone. And then the gaps, I think, goes to our value. I know we have another section, but uh, our, our 
focus on equity and making sure that every child has an opportunity. And, um, and then we're trying to prepare our students for college or career. And so we wanna make sure that they're meeting, they're making the gains necessary to prepare them for that next step. But I think they're all important. So. Others? Is, Is the goal to reduce the number? I, I just want you to think about them, and, and if we think that, so when you'll, we go to the other pages, you'll see we, ha we have a lot. And so if you remember what Mr. Casserly talked to you about was really thinking of those, those meta indicators. And I mean, I would say that I think this list at, at this point on, for this KPI is, is pretty tight, but I, I, I still want you to think about is, is there anything that, that you think is extraneous. And I mean, nothing's gonna be extraneous, but some of it, the, import, the other important point to know is, is we're <laughs> looking, we're gonna be looking at all of this. We have to look at all of this, uh, and, but, but what would you want us to report to you on? Yes, I think that's a, an important distinction. So yeah. it's, it's not a matter of what are we, not, are, are we ignoring? Right. What is it that the data that we are going to see, is it in a, in a are you seeing in a board dashboard, right. regular reports that get emailed to us? Right. So what is it that we want to see? And again, if it's all of it, it's all of it. So the data will be available. It's just how busy do we want the data that comes to us to be? Thank you. Ms. Pierce? Um, in that regards, I mean, if it is the data that comes to us, I mean, I, I've I agree with Amy on the growth and the gaps and the college readiness, but I would like to see that achievement. I mean, at the end of the day, um, I mean, we, we just heard from schools last board meeting who took very low socioeconomic status populations and they're, they're, they're reaching new proficiency levels. Um, so I would, I would like to keep that. I mean, I think that's gonna speak to that, whether they're actually college and career ready. Okay, anyone else? Nope. Dr. Just Joseph. a comment, I like, I like the greater than average growth uh, because if we're talking about accelerating, you've got you've to be better than average. That's another thing at the Council of Great City Schools they were talking about, the fact that there has to be acceleration or if, if everybody's grown on average, the gaps continue to widen. Mm -hmm. If there aren't other comments, I'm gonna keep us moving. Ms. Mearing, did you have any? Okay. Thank you. All right, so uh, the second strategy, and again, so you'll see in some cases we have uh, many, uh, many more. Uh, S2 looks at equitable access. And this is, the, I, I think here, the reason there are so many is because there are different ways of looking at this. Uh, but I would ask you again to look at, and it's on, it's on page four, unfortunately, because of the page breaks of your document. Uh, that as you look at it, which are the most essential? I'll give you three minutes again. I think that.
told me, Ms. Pierce, you might want to look at number 13 in the actions. May I ask a question? Yes. On the increased percentage of English language learner students making adequate proficiency progress, is that so they then no longer require services? Yes. Okay. Because adequate just sounds. So we're still working on that one. I, we're working with the EL department, so you zeroed right in on the one that is okay. is Sorry. is not. That's all right. That's good. Okay. So on number thirteen, since you brought it up, continue to monitor monitor for grading for learning. Like for five minutes, maybe. Say that again. For five minutes, we can monitor it and declare that it's not working. <laughs> You're talking about 13 in the actions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're, okay. We'll um, make that stronger. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything on the KPIs that uh, stand out for you as most essential? I think the three, um, the bottom one, but the three right above the last one around bandwidth, average age of computers, and ratio of devices. I think that's kind of clutter for me. We were gonna just talk so about we've we struggled with whether or not that goes in the organization piece or in the um, student equity piece. You, okay. Anything else? Uh, yes, I don't think our challenge, and, and Dr. Joseph has hit on this a couple of times, it's not just about putting the numbers of devices. It's about making sure they're used appropriately, that we provide the training. So I'd be more interested in that than okay. somebody has smart boards in their classroom. Okay. Others? Quality, not quantity. I, I'm sorry, and I didn't hear you. The qu quality, not quantity. Yep. Okay. They seem to be grouped. Uh, would you agree? Um, the third set of bullets, um, and, and when we're talking about increasing numbers in art and music, is that, that's at the secondary level? What was your question? Is it, uh, the third set of bullets, yes. two, the, uh, do, do they refer to the secondary level? The, the last one does, but in that. Uh, the first one uh, is, across, is across the board. Uh, okay. Certainly some of the things, uh, computer science is, is, I mean, we could introduce coding at the elementary and are likely to do so at the middle level as part of the STEAM initiative. Uh, so, so the, but the, the secondary, the second bullet in that third group clearly has to do with secondary students. The first one is, is K-12. So in terms of art and music, don't all elementary students already participate in art and music? Or is that, am I incorrect? So we talked about this yesterday. I don't know, Dr. Felder, if you want to. The, this has to do with access, making sure students have access to art and music. It's different. I mean, one of the things we, we, we just heard is different arts. I think we were, um, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm going to look on the right-hand column because I know we edited uh, something having to do with art so that we clarified uh, related <laughs> arts. So that would be visual arts, dramatic arts, music, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's not just um, music and art at the elementary level, but it's making sure that there are. Uh, and so that, again, is something as we look at how it relates to budget, et cetera, uh, there, for many of these things, there's definitely a budget impact. So we have to say, if we have it in here, are we committed to doing something about it? So you're finding that one not clear because of the arts and music in there? Uh, yeah, I, it's not that I'm against art and music. I'm, no, no, I'm no, no. I said not clear, <laughs> not clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I just wonder, um, I mean, maybe we need to increase art and music uh, opportunities at the middle school and high school level. I don't know. Okay. But I'm just thinking that I, I thought that all elementary students were already involved in an in art class, at least one a week in music classes. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then my other comment is that I especially appreciate the fact that we've got a focus on decreasing the number of students in exceptional ed and uh, finding a way for those students to progress to the degree that they no longer need special ed services. Can you help me understand the nuanced differences between the two, the 
first two bullets. Yes. <laughs> Wait. Different way of saying the same thing. Okay, so I kind of get weird. So which one do you prefer? Uh, well, you the first one. First one? First one. Okay. Others. Okay. I, mean, um, I was Ms. also going to say, I mean, I, none, I mean, everything we have in here is important, but but, I, but as far as the bottom, bottom 5%, I just think we should acknowledge the fact that the changes in the bottom 5% of schools doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that our schools are getting worse. There's just, it's sort of like a numbers Somebody's game. Be in the bottom. <laughs> yes, there's always a fi bottom 5%. Well, and and if Memphis, <laughs> right, Memphis well, closes all of its bottom 5%, then it bumps it back up to us. So I, okay. you know, so this is, uh, it's kind of like with me, I, it, of course, achievement is very important in that, but to me, it's sort of a, it provides a limited information for us, and I think the bottom 5% also provides a limited information for us. Okay, but. thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Pierce? Um, um, back to the, the computer question, I, I agree that it's not something that we necessarily need to know, but as long as the district does keep a, a well, in, a really, you know, updated inventory, and I ask that because I do have several elementary schools in my district who tend to use PTO funds to update technology, to add technology, and it seems like every single year it is a question that we cannot get answered in terms of who should be buying what or what does the school already have, um, and then what's coming up on the district cycle for the district to provide so the PTO is not spending money unnecessarily. But if we could just make sure that that is accessible um, to anybody in the district who would like to help out that way. Yeah, I think Mr. Henson would tell you all of his departments track a lot of things that don't even make it here, but they're really important to making sure that the district is moving forward and um, the ratio of computers to students and to staff and, and how new they are and all of those kinds of things are among those that his staff tracks. So there is a list, like I could refer some of our PTOs <laughs> to, to that. <laughs> Can I find I it? Need. We do have inventory of all. Okay. Well, it's usually a lot more of a plan. Like, what is in the plan for all these different schools so the PTO knows whether or not they need to buy any? So I don't... Yeah, that is still under discussion. Though. Okay. Okay. But well, I do want to continue to send them to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Take an opportunity to do a plug for the Gallup, to switch to Gallup from the TEL survey. Um, it's just that the, the, the database of questions that Gallup provides and then it being more of the standards that are being used across the country to allow us to compare ourselves. And so it's not just the um, cultural things that you'll find in there, but it's, and what made me think of it is, is Ms. Pierce's question. There's a question that we fail at horribly at my department is, I, I do, do I have the tools to do my job? Do I have the tools to be successful? So I think, you know, just that made me think it of that. It shows up later. You'll see Gallup. See? Yeah, I think that, so I, that was the part I couldn't remember. I think it's a good thing that we're moving to the, the Gallup piece. Any other comments on this page? Okay. I'm gonna move us on. Uh, strategy three, which is on page six. Uh, the, this looking at climate and culture and social and emotional needs of the student. I'm going to just ask you to go through the same process where you spend a, a few minutes looking at these and think about which ones uh, are, are your highest priority or tell you what you need to know about the strategy and the goal. Justification on the number of days missed in that other report. Okay. This one. this one doesn't include the edit that you gave yesterday, Dr. Joseph. Okay. Yeah, that was, I just specifically asked that we call out instead of uh, the third bullet from the bottom, instead of 
particularly boys and young men of color, I said specifically boys and African American and Latino. Um, and we have it in the slide uh, and thought we caught all of the, the changes, so we'll, I'll make sure that we catch that. Um, in one of our sessions over the weekend, we also mentioned African American girls are beginning to uh, c fall. Do you want me to say, it's, I could change it to particularly uh, for he uh, black and Hispanic students? Okay. Have we got another redundancy, the first and the second to last bullet points? The first, you said? I'm sorry, not first, sorry. The second group down, <clears throat> sorry. With bullet. It, yes, the first and the second group and the fourth seem to say the same thing. Unless yes, I'm one focuses on instructional time and one focuses on days. So we can choose which one. Um, they both look at instructional. So one says instructional days, another says instructional time. Is, this, is that the difference? Can you speak into the I'm mic sorry, button? is it the difference between in-school suspensions and out-of-school suspensions? Yes. Okay. Oh, I actually was about to ask a question on that one, too. Are you, okay. I think it's ISS would be instructional time, and out-of-school suspension would be instructional days. Yes. Which is good. Well, what I, I mean, how I initially read it, can I just say, when I initially read it, um, I, I didn't, I, I missed the second word suspension and just all due to behavior. So I was curious to know if, if you were trying to measure that in two different ways, um, which the fourth bullet would tend to be focusing on the student who um, might have been exhibiting poor behavior versus the number one, was that just a discrete decreased loss in instructional time for all students due to behavior in the school? Does that make sense? Uh, it does. So not on the individual student level. Right, because okay. it's not always the one student who's lost instructional time. It can sometimes be the whole class. Right. Which would be hard for us to measure, yeah, but what you're different. pointing out is we need to clarify which, which one captures what uh, we want to capture and, and do, it so, do so more clearly. I think the out-of-school suspension is in the percentage of students from all racial backgrounds and suspensions and expulsions. So the one that's instructional time for out-of-school, I think, is in that bullet, right? Because we did say all students. Is that fair? Which, okay. To which other bullet are you referring right now? Next time we're going to number these. Um, <laughs> the bullet that's the third from the bottom, reduced percentage of students from all Ethnic, social, yep. yep. that one speaks to me, instructional days. It's all of it, actually. So that, that includes um, referrals, suspensions, and expulsions. Right, and but you uh, capture instructional days yes, from that Yes, one. yes. All right, this is a helpful feedback. Um, we, you know, we'll, I'll figure out how to fix it. Yeah, and I, I do think that mine is harder to capture, but it's, it's something we don't need to ignore, that there are like that there are the other non-behavior students who have instructional time often lost, sure. yep. Yep. lost due to behavior of classmates. Disruption. Anything else? Yes. The second and third bullet are very similar. One's just increasing and the other's decreasing, but the second one of those is more specific in, in terms of particular yes, days. Yes, the right. So we can go with the, the third bullet in that group because that's more specific. Mm -hmm. But we'll, I'll couple the, the point of looking at uh, the data in a disaggregated way yeah, into so the third bullet because that's the piece that we'd lose if I just... Second bullet broken down yeah. in the third yeah. group. Yeah. yeah. And then is the very last bullet, is that 12 years of age? It is. I'll, I'll 
At first, I read it as like just 12. It should like, be younger than 12. Okay. Uh, yes. 12 years. Yeah. Right. 12 years old. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Thank you. So I, I'm just the actions are here so that if if you had questions about those we could look at them but for the most part that's going to be the homework <laughs> is to look at that and then um, I'll follow up with you all so on goal two uh, three strategies again we didn't plan this this way and a lot of times we were combining but create a culture of collaboration and shared accountability where people are valued supported and personally invested in professional growth uh, the first strategy, optimize the human resources department's ability to recruit, develop, evaluate, and retain high quality diverse employees at all levels. Uh, you'll re remember that this was a large part of Dr. Joseph's uh, uh, budget proposal from a little bit more than an hour ago. Uh, professional development uh, is the focus of strategy P2. Uh, but what we wanted to em emphasize here is the alignment to those things that we're trying to accomplish uh, so that it's not a scattershot approach to professional development, but that it's well planned and, and that the offerings and the menu are tied to what we're trying to accomplish across the district. And then P3, uh, looking at the work environment, uh, we believe that has a strong link to some of the retention issues uh, that, that we have and as well as attendance. So I'm gonna ask you, Again, the same set of gui guiding questions, uh, but to look at uh, the first strategy, it's on page eight of, of your handout and looking at, and this really has to do with capacity building, uh, but what, what uh, toward what end? And so the KPIs here have what it is we would wanna see. So, but again, if you could look at it and think of what are the most important pieces here or which ones are confusing, because you're doing that anyway. <laughs> Numbers two and four be very similar or go hand in hand? Two and four. Uh, they are related. Uh, I think hiring by March 31st is really a high quality indicator and the other one is how disruptive uh, uh, it, but we could still say we don't need both. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to track that. I we're, don't know, we'll maybe we both. do, but. Others? So the, the vacancy on the first day of school, do, uh, it, I mean, are we, I guess that and the next the decreased length of time for filling vacancies work hand in hand, but I'm just wondering why we're focused on the first day of school in particular. So it's, it isn't just teacher vacancies in the cycle time for filling vacancies, it would be all vacancies. So I think that's the, that's the distinction. Okay. Um, we still may wanna primarily, you may wanna hear about teacher vacancies uh, and uh, those certainly other areas um, may come up. I'm just wondering if we should hear about vacancies throughout the year too, as well. Is that in there? I'm, I didn't see it, but I missed it. Teacher vacancies Employee throughout the year? Yeah, absenteeism. I was thinking teacher vacancies. You've got several that are sort of related to de decreased employee absenteeism. So that's something certainly that we could look at throughout the year. Um, the uh, 
vacancy fill, the cycle time for va filling vacancies would be something that we could look at throughout the year as well. Some of the other ones are obviously a point in time. Then a um, couple things. First of all, I think the exit interview completion rate is very helpful because we often don't know why we're losing teachers and I think that would be helpful in our hiring practices and retention. And then seven and 10 on diversity and quality of all staff. It appears you're measuring it two different ways. One is through their diversity plan and one is through evaluations by school and district staff. C could we combine those two? Increase? Yes. Yeah. I mean, is there a reason to measure it separately? <clears throat> One is retention, uh, and one is total number. So like, for example, are we gonna be looking at, do we have uh, a retention problem with certain groups of employees? That would be significant, but we, uh, we, we need one to look at the other. <laughs> so we could say we wanna focus on retention uh, rather than the total composition of the workforce. I mean, we would be looking at all of it again, but, uh, I mean, these have been boiled down, so I know it's hard to prioritize. And any other comments, Ms. Spearing? Uh, number, the ninth one down. Increase the percentage of satisfactory evaluations. I'm thinking exceptional evaluations. Um, satisfactory just sounds... Exceptional? Yeah, exceptional. Is that a category that we have now? We have level, um, uh, we have L4 and L5 in the evaluation um, and uh, thinking, oh, it shows up actually in P2. Um, so we may not necessarily uh, need it here because we have it in P2 and we have it by the exact performance level. Okay. You guys are good. The, um, the last one is, is, is still troubling for me for a little bit. Certainly um, in increasing the exit interview completion rate, certainly you can't make someone talk to you if they don't want to talk to you, or you can't even make them be truthful if they don't want to be um, transparent around that process. But do we have instances where we actually have um, exit interviews not done just because the supervisor doesn't want to do it? I, I, I think some of these are on here because there are things that we want to do to get more of. There's another one later on, um, but we can also include that in, in the actions. We can just look at, you know, how are we gathering data from people? So when it comes, when it shows here as a, as a measure, it's because it's something that we're not doing sufficiently that we want to make sure that we're doing. I didn't have an exit interview and I just didn't even know about it. So it wasn't that somebody didn't grant it for me. I just didn't know it was an option. Right. See, that's where I'm going with that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it's it's not done consistently, but it is more of a process piece. What we really want to know is why people are leaving, and so I can put that in. I can move that over to something having to do with that actions. So um, I want to I guess say a couple of things. And so not all of these are about solving a problem. They're really about moving us forward. You know, yes. as a district. The other question I want to ask is, and I think we talked about this when we first brought up the subject of the KPIs, and, and what made me think of this is Ms. Spearing's question of, do we want to change satisfactory to, satisfactory to exceptional? And so a lot of times what we do in these kinds of things is we understand what is our year one goal, our year two goal, and our year three goal. And so maybe it's a sliding us from where we are to increasing in satisfactory. Yeah. And then year two, we slide over to increase into exceptional. Because what I don't want to do is set ourselves up for failure. And so I think it's looking at the, because what this is going to be a reflection of is the investments we've discussed in the budget and finance committee. How, does the, the, how do those investments begin to move the trends and move the numbers? And so, you know, to say that we didn't get to exceptional, <laughs> shouldn't be considered a failure 
if we've increased the performance of our teachers through investing in professional development and through, you know, and through the other supports that are reflected in the budget. So I think it's, it, if we look at it as an opportunity, yeah, we do want to get to exceptional, but let's walk ourselves through that because we're doing a lot of things that are new and different. And we really don't, we, we believe that those investments are the right thing to move us, but allow ourselves to measure that in a step way as opposed to, you know, setting we us could, up And to, we could say and both. Say, and we, then could, we, we could look at satisfactory and exceptional, and then that shows you. Yeah, because I don't want it to be, st the result to be the investment that we made in professional development was wrong. You know what I mean? So it, people, will, I don't want the correlation between the investment and what we chose to measure as opposed to looking at, you know, aggregate. So, so if we can do both Thanks. as opposed to just switching it to satisfactory, just seeing how, I think we've done that with our student data too, right? Trying to shift that entire block, right? right? So, so let me just follow up. The first question, was there a point behind it? That we're, not all of these are a problem we're trying to solve? Yeah, it was just a statement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, perhaps uh, we have a scale of, in terms of teacher evaluation, one through five, or uh, to word it in such a way that we are moving the percentage of teachers up those, uh, that From scale. each level. Okay. Uh -huh. Helpful. Anybody else on this? Uh, would this be the place, and, and we could be getting too nitpicky, I don't know, but we had such a critical shortage a couple of years ago of bus drivers. Would this be a place, just I'm thinking operationally, the things that, that yes. we know we have to have staffed to um, run? So we would break down the second bullet from the bottom, um, and that did used to just say bus drivers, but, but there's also teacher absenteeism. Uh, so there are certain employee groups, certainly, where, where we may need to double down a little bit more. Uh, but that we would then break it down by employee group, and if it would be helpful, decreased employee ab measured by employee group or, or reported by employee group or something like Maybe that. Even just the fill rate, like it was a fill rate issue at one point. Okay, so that was vacancies then, as opposed to absenteeism. Is that? I mean, that's how it had been. I'm just okay. saying. Obviously, we need those are critical positions to run. Okay. and subs as well. Okay, anything else on this one? Thank you. Um, and you can always send, you know, contact me afterwards too. So uh, P2, uh, this is looking at professional development and having it linked to individual need aligned to the strategic plan again uh, to build staff capacity through training, coaching, and performance management. I'm gonna ask you to look at those. Uh, measures and then we'll discuss them. We do have an asterisk with no reference in the third bullet. Thought we got rid of all those. Uh, okay, so what that referen what, what it was a reference to was uh, what the levels were and we're, we will put those back in, but we, okay. Any comments on this one? I have a question, um, just to, for, to clarify a question. At one point in time, I remember um, honoring and recognizing the teachers who, achieve, who achieved national certification status here in the boardroom. And um, it's, I think it's been quite some time since we've done that. And we are, and I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, we also provided them with a small stipend for achieving that. Um, that particular status. I don't know if we still do that. Do you know? We do. We provide them a, a supplement for the life of the certificate. I think it's a 10 year certificate. Um, I think last year when I was interim, I think we did. We, we, 
Did we? Okay. Cameo and I will work on that. Oh, we'll, okay. we'll make sure we get it on the agenda. So, um, Chris, you said that um, we give them a stipend for the life of the status, the status. So that comes like in through payroll or something like that? Yes, it's, it's added to okay. their pay. Okay, so it's not a lump sum kind of thing. It's a, it's a, um, a bump additional pay. stipend. It's, it's added to their salary amount. Okay, all right. I'm trying to remember what the amount is. I don't remember either. Okay. Well, yes. Okay, me. I'm going to open a can of worms here. Um, no. <laughs> the team evaluations. Um, I wish we could look at that and re-examine that. Uh, our teachers, many of our teachers, are very unhappy with that evaluation system. So I can always we can look at that in terms of actions, you know, evaluate our evaluations. <laughs> but is that, is, it's, it's district specific? It's state, it's state. Oh, okay, so it's state. We, can, we, well, that we do have some options at the state level. Anything? Okay. Um, on the next last bullet, increase completion and performance evaluation across all employees. I Same. gathering that that that's also um, not universally done. Okay. So that's why it is very much of a process metric, uh, but we need to do that in order to get to the next one. Right. Okay. Okay. Move us on. Are we helping you? Yes. <laughs> Good. Well, I so <laughs> part of it is. Are you, we all know that this is what we're going forward with. And part of it is, is there anything, you know, you're asking clarifying questions and you're also pointing out uh, discrepancies or inconsistencies and that is helpful. Uh, I know it's painfully slow. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> so, but that's a work session for you. Uh, okay, um, P3, if, um, this again, this is looking at work environment. Uh, and so how are we, you, you see Gallup is there. I, I, I know uh, Dr. Gentry is out of the room for a minute, but this is a particular survey that measures these things. And there's an asterisk again that we'll just ignore. Any comments on this one? Anything that you think uh, doesn't belong or any that you would elevate to the highest status? They're all very, very important. <laughs> okay. I move us on? <clears throat> so this is the organizational excellence goal uh, that looks at effective operations and customer service and then creating a collaborative culture of data analysis and accountability. And, and that particular strategy uh, has a lot to do with how we're going to monitor our progress against the strategic plan, how we're going to report to you, how we're going to monitor uh, our project plans, et cetera. So if you take a couple minutes to look at the effective operations and customer service. Oops, we have, uh, I think we made, uh, sorry about that first bullet. Should really stop at district. So I have a question around the, um, 
increased breakfast and lunch participation rate. Um, with, with all the students eating breakfast and lunch free of charge um, the last two years, I believe, um, but do we still have an issue with students not eating? Because I know that we, the participation rate just skyrocketed when we reached out and, and got that grant. So I don't know if we still have that issue or not. So I, we can take that one out? No, I, I just I wanted think, clarification around it. <laughs> I think one of your colleagues wanted lunch per, food, uh, meal per participation in there. Okay. If they want it in there, it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. On um, the energy utilization, that is one of the first issues I, that came up when I was elected in 2012. and I. I'm probably not aware of the steps we've taken to address it, but I know it, it's also come up in our uh, audit a couple of years ago, and I think we could save a lot of money if we had a clear plan. Maybe there is more in place than we are aware of, but I do think, um, you know, I, I, that's one, you know, we have the companies that try to meet with board members, and, and when one said, you know, they could save several million dollars a year just by changing behavioral practices. Um, so if you look at the action number 11 uh, that corresponds with that, so there are um, uh, ah. certain steps that uh, Mr. Henson's department is taking to. And if you happen to, to look at the budget, you'll see we've reduced the utility accounts because we are saving money. Hooray. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Um, and then on the. I love this farm to table option. <laughs> it seems like a lofty goal, but I think that's great. And uh, just, what, I don't know if anyone else, but recycling has been kind of an ongoing issue for the district. Do we want to even bother measuring? I mean, drives me crazy. Yeah, I know. I, well, so we had an issue with trays, and I think we've replaced some of the trays. And then I met with someone who was wanting to uh, manage food waste because we're one of the largest metro, you know, we, we the largest. Uh, Metro agency, wrong agency, but um, so we could make a really big impact if we could. I don't know if that's something anyone else wants to measure, but that keeps coming up in my conversations. We'll, we'll talk about it. Thank you. And um, the parent satisfaction, how do we measure that? How are we planning? Is that going to be a Gallup so, poll? So that's one of the things that we're, we're looking at survey tools to, to do, to, to conduct. Uh, so some of them we're, we're, we are having to identify measures or, or methods for measuring. Okay. Okay. Anything else on this one? That you have seven. Okay. We're going to look at O2, which is um, the data analysis piece. So this one only has one, which is, are yes. we actually doing it? And are we reporting to we, one another based on this? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go on to C1. Uh, again, uh, we went through these goals before, but looking at opportunities for parents and family uh, to support their child's education. <laughs> Then there's community and business partners, their role, and the quality of the educational programs available to students and parents. Uh, so C1 focuses on parents and family members. So all, all the KPIs are great, it, but they have a fiscal note to them. I mean, if they have a fiscal note to them. If we're going to do all these activities and on um, these high level actions, it, uh, it will come with a price tag for sure. Yes. Right. So that's, that's an important point. But you will note that with communications and engagement, there are some investments that Dr. Joseph proposed for this year. Um, and then, uh, 
as, as we look at, I mean, any, we'll have to come up with surveys, we have to look at training and interacting with parents uh, and uh, creating a more welcoming environment. If, if we wanna measure it, then we need to take action to do something about it, you're, you're right. Well, and first we have to get them there. And, you know, transportation can be an issue. Um, you know, if we want to get them there, maybe we'll have to provide a meal. And, you know, we have to be, you know, think about all the insular things that we want to do to make sure we have that parental involvement. Any other reactions? Is, are there any of those that we would then take off? Absolutely not. Okay. So that was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, C2 has to do with our community and business partners. First one, what exactly do we mean by increased community and satisfaction? Uh, we're talking about Nashville as a whole or? A poll, you said? No, Nashville as a whole. Uh, we can define that as our partners, you know, our, not, the, not the whole community, but as those who interact with us at some, in some way. Um, so we, we, we could look at a sample that, that includes um, what I would call official partners. I'll clarify that. Can you think? Can you speak into the mic? Those, you're referring to those who have uh, adopted schools through pencil? Well, they could be, have a, a, be a formal partner like that. They could be individuals. They, they could also, we might also look at um, vendors. You know, so how, how, how are we doing acro across the board? Um, how, wh what do we like as a partner? So it's more like with our responsiveness, our partnership, uh, ease of entry, do we have single point of contact, different kinds of things like that. But it is pretty vague as it's stated. Anything else on that one? What does increased evaluations initiated mean? So that, that right now is to look at those partnerships that we do have in terms of uh, how effective they are. We, we may or may not say that's, a, if we have memoranda of a, a understanding that are tied to the strategic plan, then we know they're, they're, they're relevant and a, a linked to the kinds of things we're trying to achieve, so that may be something that we don't keep there. Was that, okay. I just would add that I think increasing our partnerships to support the work we're doing and having partnerships aligned with our strategic plan. That's so that actually bullet of, three is meant to. Right, I, well I was just saying, I think that's one of the most important things we oh, could be okay. doing. So okay. bullet three I think is really, could make a huge impact on the district if we're effective. And okay. Last one. Mm -hmm. uh, so C3. Uh, is this this is it's been a tough one to place but looking at expanding and strengthening the quality of educational programs of, uh, available to students and parents uh, and this goes back to the equity of program access as well as um, there are a number of things in the transition team report that that link to this Second and third bullets, second and third bullets on there, are they? They're essentially same? the same. Okay. <laughs> and then. Which do you like, the positive or the negative? Do we uh, decrease the student retention? Mm -hmm. Increase retention. Increase retention. Increase retention. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the last bullet, is this the same as the one mentioned, I think, in one of the, maybe the first or second strategic goal around improving yeah. Increasing participation in AP Cambridge, et cetera. So, is this a redundant one, or are there other programs that? I'll, I'll, I'll crosswalk it. Okay. Other questions or comments, um, Ms. Pierce? 
the fourth bullet, increase enrollment in zone schools and those with insufficient enrollment based on capacity. Do you have, is there a, how, do you, how are you defining insufficient enrollment? So we have, for each one of our schools, we have building capacity and program capacity identified, and we know how many students are in them and whether or not they're being well utilized as a facility and if it's cost efficient. The other way we could look at it is based on those that, I mean, we have a number of schools through the site-based budgeting process that we have to give additional resources to because they're not big enough to, to um, operate otherwise, <laughs> you know, they wouldn't get the right, the sufficient dollars from school, the school-based budgeting allocation. We typically looked at under 70% utilization. Mm -hmm. Do we have that noted, just even in our budget, which schools are receiving additional resources because they're under-enrolled? It's not in the budget, uh, but one that of the, if you go back to, let's see, um, the, the project, the, it's, it's a hidden, I'm gonna see which action item it is, but the, the, there's an action item uh, to look at school capacity, enrollment, zone, grade okay. figuration um, as a major project. I'm pretty sure it's in the academic access one uh, that uh, will g allow us to look at all of those pieces uh, in a deliberate way. Uh, based on a variety of criteria that's not just enrollment. I'll tell you which page in a minute. Anything on C3, uh, any, anything else? Oh, it's not, if you look at page four, Mary, um, it's number two. Okay. Uh, in the actions. Okay, so uh, what I would ask you all to do uh, and is if, if you get a chance to look at the actions, uh, and then if you have questions about those, to make notes, and I can follow up with a phone call, or you could send an email, whatever is easiest, uh, to uh, just let us know if you have specific questions. But those begin to explicate what it is we're gonna do, what you, you probably heard about some in the budget, and that we'll then have timelines to, and, uh, you know, some of it we're not going to start this year. Much of it we probably are. <laughs> See, my hair is getting gray. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any any other feedback at at this point? Super fast, and I may be the only one that feels this way. But this word rigor that we keep <laughs> using, I don't. I wonder if we could use a different word. That kind of is a buzzword that sometimes sets off uh, reactions. <laughs> I don't know. I just wonder if there's a different way of saying it. I, I personally don't like it. I know a lot of people use it, but that's something to think about later, not tonight. Okay. <laughs> we'll think about it. Okay. And uh, see, we'll get out the thesaurus. One of those I don't think it I think those still exist, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Online, yeah. Online, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, thank you everybody. I know that was a lot. Appreciate the attention and the time. And I mean, this is, this is these, these are the measures on which uh, everything's gonna hinge. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Go home now? <laughs> I, I, do we have to close the meeting? <laughs> so, what happened? I mean, do we have to close the work session? <laughs> No, you don't yeah. have to. Just get them and go. Anna? Yeah, we're, oh, yeah, we're done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I say something like the lights went out. <laughs> 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 <laughs>